So we are, we are now recording. This is Sustainable Digital Learning Environment, Our Practices of Sakai, being presented by Yuji Tokiwa, Shoji Kajita, Tomoki Toda, and Hisashi Hatakayama. And I apologize for my poor pronunciation. So um, they're going to moderate themselves. So I will just keep time and, uh, and close up in, in, at the end of this session. So thanks all. Okay, um, uh, uh, nice to meet you. My name is Hisashi Atakeyama. Uh, so uh, I am, I'm nervous because this is my first online conference. Uh, welcome to our session. This session title is Sustainable Digital Learning Environment, Our Practice of Sakai. I am a, an organizer of this session. My name is Hisashi Hatakeyama. Uh, most of higher educational institutes in Japan were doing face-to-face -face or blended learning mainly and has never held large-scale online lectures yet. However, many universities are for forced to organize online lectures by efforts of COVID-19. In this session, we will report and share about our Sakai operation in this drastic change. So today's presenters belongs to the universities using Sakai as a university-wide learning management system. We formed Japan Apparel Community, which is a user group of apparel products in Japan. The former of the group was the Japan Sakai Community. So today we have four talks. Let's get started. First presenter is uh, Professor Shoji Kajita. He's a professor at Kyoto University. So he is known as the leading person of the learning management system in Japan. And he is developing and operating Panda based on Sakai in Kyoto University. And he was conferred an Apple Fellow 2020 last night. Clap. So please start. Sorry, <laughs> muted. Okay, thank you very much for very good introduction. Uh, my name is Shoji Kajita. Uh, I'm working for IT planning office at Kyoto University as a professor. Uh, today, let me talk about our current situation uh, in this uh, pandemic situation and also upgrade our Sakai instance from uh, Sakai 10 to Sakai 20. Let me turn off the uh, my video. Uh, okay. So we have been using Sakai at Kyoto University since 2012. And uh, uh, there are two services uh, we are now providing for Kyoto University. One is Panda, the other is cyber learning space. Panda is used uh, by uh, 1,740 regular classes uh, uh, by about uh, 15,000 instructors in 2019 fiscal year. As for the CLS, uh, CLS is used for compliance training programs such as information security and uh, animal experiment. These services are uh, using uh, the same code base, which is Sakai 10.7, and their computer resources are three VMs and the Oracle database. But due to uh, due to the uh, sorry, uh, however, uh, due to the uh, COVID nineteen situation like yours, 
The panda's situation has completely and dramatically changed. At Kyoto University, now all courses are fully online in this 2020 fiscal year, started from April. And the panda's usage is about 10 times compared with last year's usage. And uh, now we have 13,000 to 14,000 uh, maximum sim simultaneous users every day. The biggest was 14,800 uh, simultaneous users. As a result, we are now using seven virtual machines for Sakai front end and also 18 BCPU cores for Oracle database. As for the uh, LTI integrations, we have been using Zoom, Kaltura, Turnitin, and virtual desktop infrastructure. And uh, during this uh, COVID-19 situation, the, the usage of Zoom and Kaltura has dramatically increased, like these numbers. Due to this uh, uh, situation, uh, in terms of the uh, upgrade, we postponed the uh, uh, planned upgrade of Sakai code base. But the uh, situation is uh, now uh, mitigating, so we are uh, uh, resuming right now. The target is Sakai 22, and uh, its computer resources are going to be Oracle Cloud for cyber running space and uh, on premise for Panda. As you see, uh, firstly, we will upgrade CRS on dry, then uh, upgrade Panda on September by using these three phased upgrades. Oh, sorry, I didn't change. Uh, during the upgrade, we use two GitHub repositories. One is the uh, Open Panda, uh, which is an uh, open repository, and the other is a uh, Fry Panda, uh, which is the uh, closed uh, repository uh, for uh, operation. By doing so, we are expecting that uh, we can easily. Uh, contribute our modi modifications to the Sky repository uh, in this year. So uh, that's all. Uh, next speaker is... Professor Toda, now your turn. Yes, so the, let me share my screen. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Tomoki Toda of Nagoya University. So the, let me the briefly introduce our recent Sakai activity in the Nagoya University or any for short. Okay, so the, let me turn off my video. Okay, so the, we have the long Sakai history in Nagoya University and uh, we implemented Sakai as NUCT in 2010, probably by Kajita Sensei. And uh, in 2014, the, we started a video streaming service co cooperating with the Sakai, I mean the NUCT. And in 2015, the, we started an auto registration service of all undergraduate course sites by cooperating with the curriculum management system. And uh, we started our developed the service called the Kami Repo to handle the handwritten assignment over the Sakai in the 2017. So this graph shows the utilization rate over the past five years. The before the 2015, the actually the rate was less than 
but uh, by implementing the auto registration service, uh, it became double. And since then, the, it the gradually increased, but uh, recently the, it is almost saturated. And uh, last year, the num total number of call sites was uh, around the, actually the 7,000, but the 40% of the 7,000 were actually used. And uh, we the, used the Sakai, the 2.9, so that we decided to update the Sakai 2.9 to the Sakai 12 uh, almost uh, two years ago. And uh, we started uh, customizing the Sakai, the 12.1, and then the updated to the 12.4.5, and finally the 0. 0.6. And uh, we developed the the trial version of NUCT based on the Sakai 12.6. And last January, the, we also developed the new server and storage systems uh, using the three virtual machines as a server and MariaDB and NFS as storage. And last March, the, we have successfully renewed the NUCT. But uh, we have not yet migrated the previous database because uh, we used the Oracle database, but now that we are using the MariaDB, so that it is not so easy for us to migrate the database. So that we have decided to maintain the previous version of NUCT as a wait only for making their contents available. And we are fighting against COVID-19 since the last March. And our university, they also decided the, to give all courses the free online so that we strengthened their NUCT the, since the last March. First, the, we updated our front end system such as IPCOM and network connection. And we upgraded the server as well, the, such as the, from the three to six virtual machines and from 8 to 16 CPUs, and uh, from 16 to 32 gigabyte memory. And we also registered all graduate, graduate course sites, uh, as well as uh, undergrad course sites. The number of the graduate course sites was uh, more than the 1,800. So that we the carefully prepared the NUCT that for handling the all online courses, but the, on the first day of the semester, the, we had the difficulties in handling the, all of them. So the, we quickly upgraded the server at the time the, from the three, six to 11 virtual machines and from one to 16 gigabyte heap memory. So this setting was a very, very important for handling the Java garbage collection. And we finished the, this upgrade within the four words. The, since then, the NUCT has very well handled all online courses. And we are monitoring NUCT so that we have, uh, we found that the utilization rate in April was more than 80%, the, which was more than the double of the number last year. And uh, NUCT is always used by around the 3,000 users in each of them. The maximum was the maximum is around 4,000 users in their second hour on Monday. And the uh, data traffic is around the 400 and uh, 500 mega BPS. And uh, our university uh, suggested that the professor give the the online course using the on-demand course materials such as the PowerPoint file with speech on the NUCT. So the, even if giving the online classes in such an on-demand way, the, we have observed that the students tend to access NUCT with the class timetable. So this is a very interesting the behavior. So the, this figure show the number of connections of the IPCOM so the, over the time. So that these red arrows, oh sorry, whoops. So these red arrows show the starting time of each class. So the number of connection peaks, they well corresponds to the, this, these starting times. And we can also observe the, this behavior in the nighttime, probably the students is doing the homework. 
and we can observe that this pattern is very consistently over the, the weekday. And even over the weekend, the, we can observe there are some activities in the NUCT. So there, I think the students is study, studying much harder than the last year. And uh, we also the, the developed another NUCT for the, our affiliated the high school and junior high school. So the, we quickly the, deployed the, another NUCT the, which was developed independently of official our NUCT. So we use the local ID systems the, without using the, our university's authentication system. And uh, we quickly developed the, such another the Sakai server by effectively using the clone of the virtual machine. And we finished the all settings within six hours. So that now the Sakai can help their education in university as well as, I mean, the, not only the education in the university, but also the education in the high school and the junior high school. Okay, that's all the, from my side. So the next speaker is the Tokiwa Sensei. Yes. Hi, uh, my name is Yuji Tokiwa from Hosei University. Uh, on personal note, I retired from Hosei University and now my position is a uh, visiting researcher of research center Hosei University. My talk is about a renewal of Sakai this April. Hosei University has been learning Sakai for nine years from 2011. At the end of the previous school year, the lease contract for Sakai was expired and an open bid for new system took place. And uh, Kanematsu Electronics Apple Commercial Affiliate proposed Sakai and won the bid. So, Hosei University continues to run Sakai in the next five years. At first, I would like to review Sakai 2.7.1. Uh, Sakai was a university-wide LMS and started in the version of 2.7.1. A number of students and instructors and a course uh, as follows here, here. And the servers were replaced at the contract renewal in 2015. What I would like to say is uh, Sakai 2.7.1 has been used without version up and no system down was experienced our experience proves that Sakai was very robust system. And uh, this April, Sakai 12.6 started. By comparison, both screenshots are shown in this slide. The left is previous Sakai, and the right is current Sakai. As you notice, user interface is almost the same. However, uh, system, infrastructure, system infrastructure was changed from private cloud to AWS, Amazon Web Services. This slide shows replacement policy of Hosei University. The policy is aiming to reduce the cost, uh, such as Sakai customization, help disk operation, uh, service for content migration, as well as users learning curve. In detail, no newer function for Sakai and uh, no migration service for instructors course materials. As noted in the previous slide, AWS was employed and help desk was changed from 
on-site to online. As you know, Japan is also suffering by COVID-19. Online lecture was held instead of classroom lecture. Then more instructors want to use LMS. Uh, despite such demanding requests, thanks to uh, AWS and the online help desk, Sakai can cope with them. We noticed that uh, dynamic capability of AWS and online help desk is the key factors for resilience in addition to uh, cost reduction. Thank you very much for um, our next app, uh, Hatakema Sensei, please. Okay, thank you. Um, right, share, slide, share, share. I am a lecturer at Hosei University. My name is Hisashi Hatakeyama. I worked at Tokyo Metropolitan University until March this year, and currently work as a visiting researcher at the university. Today, let me briefly introduce the case of Tokyo Metropolitan University. Tokyo Metropolitan University is a public university founded by Tokyo Metropolitan Government. We have a localized Sakai instance named Kibako. Kibako launched in 2014. Uh, that is based on Sakai 2.7. Uh, it's too old to use, but regularly constant. We served as a university-wide system for students and faculty members. The usage summary of the system is average monthly active users are 5,500 per month, and uh, fiscally, fiscal yearly login users about uh, 1 million. Our system is integrated with some university-wide ICT systems, such as courses registration system. So we import the master data of users and the courses at the beginning of the fiscal year in regular operation, and the system automatically updates relation between courses and users every day. But so this year, we were forced to hold online lectures. Our spring semester began on 11th May. Now we plan to continue online lectures during the semester, excluding training courses such as uh, fieldwork based experiments or nursing and so on. Our online lectures hold on a combination of two lecture types. One is the real-time type. The teachers and students are using a web-based conference system such as Zoom. They have a lecture with two-way communication. Another is the on-demand type. Teachers distribute learning resources via Kibako, Itsakai LMS and students run at their own time. We must support the on-demand type lecture. It is necessary for us to avoid the system down of Kibako. In order for that, we had prepared in two approaches. First, we optimized system configurations. Second, we had reviewed and fixed the specs of the servers. Our system is operating on only four physical servers in our university. So we can't upgrade the environment dramatically. However, fortunately, uh, we have a development server and a backup server. We deployed three virtual servers on the development server and scale out application servers. On the other hand, we upgraded CPUs and RAM of primary DB server by porting parts from the backup server. So it was very eccentric work, but it was the only way to take it with our limited resources. So 
therefore, we set to available self-registration for all courses. It enables students to join courses before course registrations. They want to get resources or attend the guidance of the course because they decide to register or not. And we performed the minimum required procedures for holding online lectures before the beginning of the term. For example, we set relations between courses and students. But however, we received a lot of inquiries and great support. Also, there are various problems we are now able to operate smoothly and are uh, conducting online classes. That's all. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. This is the end of my presentation. OK. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Hi all, Josh Wilson here. Uh, it is uh, 37 minutes past the hour, so we've got about three minutes left in this session. So if anyone has any last minute questions, feel free to, uh, to put them out there, either in the chat or in any other way you'd like. Tiffany writes about the motivation to stay with version 2.7 for so many years. Um, I, I, I found this to be an interesting question of mine as well. Maybe we could address that and then uh, and then close out the session if there are no other questions. We have a, a question about uh, 2.7, uh, same version uh, for so many years. And uh, uh, in Hose University, so Sakai 2.7 have been used for uh, nine years. It depends on the contract uh, for uh, vendors. And uh, we sh should uh, uh, maintain uh, four or five years and uh, no version up because of uh, uh, contract. So, uh, and uh, there is a no uh, security hole uh, because of security patch. And uh, I think, uh, of course, uh, uh, the version up is uh, necessary, but uh, uh, we didn't because of uh, uh, contact restriction. It's okay. Tiffany, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, it is 9.39 or 39 minutes past the hour, wherever you are. So uh, let's, let's wrap up there. So I wanna say thanks to our four presenters um, and thanks to, uh, to all of you for being here. So I wanna remind you that uh, this recording will be available on the Aperio Yes, and we have a Sakaiger, don't, yes, very nice. Um, <laughs> I love it. Um, so this recording will be available on the, the uh, Aperio YouTube channel in a little while. So, and I wanna encourage you to please come to the lightning talks a little bit later on this morning. So the lightning talks will, uh, will take place at 10.30 Eastern. And uh, we've got three topics at this point. Yesterday, there was a really neat skit, the possibly the first ever lightning talks performance skit which was kind of fun. So who knows what we'll see today. So, so please come. So thanks all for your time and uh, we'll, we'll see you later on in the day. Bye-bye.
Thank you for your time. Bye bye. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much.